In Rust, we cannot mutate a data while there is immutable reference to that data. For example, if we create an immutable reference to the variable s, and then try to mutate s while the immutable reference still exists, this code will not compile. The Rust compiler doesn't allow us to mutate a data while there is immutable reference to that data. However, there is a way to go around the Rust compiler by using interior mutability. Interior mutability allows data mutation even when there are immutable reference to that data. One smart pointer that enables interior mutability is called a ref cell. Since smart pointers that enable interior mutability go around the Rust compiler, when barring rules are broken, your program will crash at runtime instead of having this barring rule check done at compile time. The ref cell is used for a single threaded purpose. The analogous of ref cell for multi threaded purpose is the mutex, which we will cover in another video. Ref cells are used in combination with the RC to create immutable data with shared ownership. In this video, I'll show you some examples of how to use the ref cell smart pointer. Let's begin by looking at an example of creating a mutable list. In the previous video, we used the RC smart pointer to create a list that shares some of the data. For example, here I create a list called A, which will be 1 and then points to nil. And then I create another list called B, where the head is a 2 and the tail points to A which is 1 in nil. Finally, I create another list where the head is a 3 and the tail points to 1 in nil. Here the list B and C share a common part, which is A. List B and C are able to share data thanks to the smart pointer RC. RC is a smart pointer that allows us to share ownership of a data. If you remember, RC is a smart pointer that is only used for read-only purpose. But what happens if you try to modify this data? Let's say we want to change this 1 to a 9 so that list B will be 2, 9, and nil, and list C will be 3, 9, and then nil. Since we're going to update variable A, let's declare this as mute. Since list A is wrapped in RC, let's dereference it to get the inner value, which will be the list starting from cons. So this is aster and then A. This will give us a list of cons with the value and the rest of the list elements. Let's pattern match this. If let cons of some value and then the tail, since we're not going to be updating the tail, we'll ignore the tail, is equal to. So over here, we're unwrapping the RC, which will give us back cons, value, and then the rest of the list elements. Here, we don't want to take ownership. We want to borrow this as a mutable reference. So we'll prefix it with ampersand sign and then mute. So now that we got a mutable reference to this value V, which will be equal to 1, let's say that we dereference this value V and then set it equal to 9. The idea here is that if you write a code that looks something like this, we should be able to update this value 1 to 9. But of course, this code will not compile since RC is only for read-only purpose. Trying to compile the code, we get an error saying cannot borrow data in a RC as mutable. So do you see the problem here? We want to create a list where some of the data is shared between multiple lists. We accomplish this by using the RC smart pointer. But later on, if you want to modify the part that is shared, in this case, list A, then we cannot do it since we need the RC smart pointer to share ownership, but the RC smart pointer does not allow us to modify the data. So this is where we need to introduce ref cell. Ref cell will allow data mutation even when there are immutable reference to that data. So first, let's update our list. The list needs to be wrapped in a ref cell so that the list can be shared by other lists. This is done by RC. And the ref cell smart pointer will allow us to mutate the list. We need to import the ref cell from std cell ref cell. And then going back to our code over here, we need to wrap all of the list elements by ref cell. Okay, we're almost there. But before we move any further, let's first take a detour and see how to use the ref cell. Let's start with a simple example. Let's say that we have a string called s. To use the ref cell, we first need to wrap this string s into ref cell. To modify the data inside the ref cell, we first need to call a function called borrow mute. This will return a type called ref mute. To modify our string that is inside a ref cell, we first need to dereference it. And then we'll be able to update it. In this example, I append a crab emoji. Are we done? Let's try to print ref cell after we modify the string. Execute the code. The value that is printed is a struct of ref cell with the value saying borrowed. Currently, our string s is borrowed by the ref cell until this ref mute is dropped. We can force this ref mute to be dropped inside the main function by introducing a new scope. And then let's try to print this ref cell again. 
Execute the code again, and this time you get ref cell value rust with the crab emoji appended. What this shows is that once we call the function borrow mute, we need to drop this ref mute that is returned before we can look into the data that is updated. In this example, we first call borrow mute to get back a ref mute. Update the data that is wrapped inside the ref cell, and then we drop this ref mute. After this ref mute is dropped, we can look into the data that is modified. Now ref cell turns a compilation error for broken borrowing rules into a runtime error. So if we were to write invalid code that breaks the borrowing rule, instead of the compiler throwing an error, we will encounter the error when we try to run the program. To see this, we can try to create two mutable reference. Compile the code, and the code compiles. Execute the code, and the code panics. This is how a ref cell turns a compilation error coming from broken borrowing rules into a runtime error. The code compiles, but the code does not run. In our example, the code does not run because here we're trying to create two mutable references. And one of the borrowing rules is that we can always have one mutable reference existing at the same time. So now that we have some introduction on how to use the ref cell and some of the things that we need to watch out for, let's go back to our example. How do we use the ref cell to update the variable inside cons? We want to update this one to a nine. Going back to our example, what we have to do here is call the function borrow mute. The function borrow mute returns a ref mute. When we dereference this ref mute, we get our list back, cons, one, and then followed by the rest of the list. Here we're pattern matching, but we don't want this part to take ownership. So again, we borrow mutable by putting an ampersand sign and then mute. And now we get a mutable reference to the variable v. Let's change this to say equal to nine. And that completes the code. Let's print the list out. What we expect is that our list to be two nine nil and three nine and nil. Execute the code and we get ref cell value nine, ref cell with nil, list b is two nine and then nil, and then list c is three nine and then nil. So in this video, I'll show you an example of how to use the RC and the ref cell to create a mutable list.